So I wrote some things. Can I just share you this? Because I can. think it answers you the question. Can. Uh, if you'll bear with me. Um, so, how to be a feminist. Complain, complain, complain over the pettiest shit. Complain, 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 even if you benefit. Complain, 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 even if you win. Complain, 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 that's how you be a feminist. Um, I had to learn how to be a feminist. You don't say. So throughout high school and college, I was involved with clubs, organizing against wars in the Middle East, raising awareness about climate change, and demanding gay and lesbian rights. So I was heavily involved in social justice causes, but I still didn't call myself a feminist. At the time, I may have even uttered the dreaded phrase, I believe in equality, but I'm not a feminist. Because what even is, Nigel? I don't even know what an egalitarian is. What even is that? I don't know. I've never even heard of that. I don't, even, I don't know what synonyms are. Well, I mean, shit. Yeah, not a high point in my life. Um, so like most people who grew up immersed in the neoliberal ideology of the West, I saw the world largely as a series of individuals making their own personal individual choices. And here I was, a young woman, making my own personal choices about what to wear, what to buy, what to study, and what I wanted to do every day. Um, within that narrow individualistic framework, feminism seemed like a relic of the distant past. Yeah, 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 that's all I gotta say to that. Back then, I thought sexism basically boiled down to a few bad apples with misguided personal beliefs born out of ignorance or overt hatred. You know, the interesting thing that I learned in school was that one of my teachers, well, lots of my teachers, especially when I was like in elementary school, said that, you know, children aren't born racist. You know, racism is something that you're taught. You know, you don't, you're not born with a predisposition to hate people. And I, I, I think they're right. I don't think anyone is born with a predisposition to hate anything. I do think, you know, these ideas of hatred must be sown within the minds of human beings. I'm just saying. So it wasn't until I was in my early to mid-twenties that I began to realize my impression of feminism had been completely wrong. You mean you didn't realize that it was Marxism in disguise? Uh, with the help of some amazing mentors and by reading a lot of feminist writing, especially the words of women of color and queer women from around the world, I learned to see through a sociological lens. And what? And understand the world as it really exists, as a series of intersecting social systems. What? Did you take the red pill, Anita? Were you, were you in the Matrix? Are we all stuck in some fucking computer world? You began to see the world as it really was. You mean to tell me that you go through 20 years of your life being able to make any type of decision, and then all of a sudden you see... I don't even... Uh, whatever. Whatever. Keep talking. I guess, I guess, I don't know, maybe we're all fucking delusional. Maybe I need to take, the, maybe I need to go find fucking Morpheus and take the red pill so I can, maybe I need to go talk to Goodfella to get a pair of those hipster glasses so I can, so I can see the world for what it is. I don't know. Once you have a systemic and institutional framework, you see how oppression manifests in many subtle ways under the systems of what Bell Hooks calls white supremacist capitalist patriarchy. So not only did I have to learn how to be a feminist, I also had to learn how to be a feminist who understands systems. I had to learn how systems of oppression are maintained by our participation in them, but they're also self-perpetuating via paths of least resistance, and as such, are larger than any one person's choices. Okay, so this is the part where I say things that may ruffle some feathers, um, but I think it's a critical discussion to have. So ever, over the past few years, I've become increasingly worried about the direction mainstream internet feminism appears to be headed, at least in the West. Um, are you worried about the fact that a lot of these feminists flip shit because people have dissenting opinions? I mean, look, I understand that not all feminists are bad people. Like, I know that, I, I understand. Like, not everyone who says that they're a feminist is a terrible individual. But I mean, let's be honest, I've encountered lots of feminists on the internet, and they don't like dissenting opinions, but Nita Sarkeesian, I know that's not what you're talking about, because if it was, well then, we wouldn't be doing this video response right now. Um, unfortunately, many contemporary discourses in and around feminism tend to emphasize a form of hyper-individualism. I know, and that individualism thing is so counterproductive to Marxism. <sighs> Can't have that shit. Which is informed by that neoliberal worldview. More and more I hear variations on this idea that anything that any woman personally chooses to do is a feminist act. I know, right? Like, God forbid you choose to get married, stay at home, and raise your children. I mean, what even is that? That's, that's, that's patriarchy. This attitude is often referred to as choice feminism. 
Joyce Feminism posits that each individual woman determines what is empowering for herself, which might sound good on the surface, but this concept risks obscuring the bigger picture and larger fundamental goals of the movement. I know, right? Man, God forbid that we create powerful, strong individual women. Oh, that just, that would just make too much bloody sense, now, wouldn't it? Um, by focusing on individual women with a very narrow individual notion of empowerment. It erases the reality that some choices that women make have an enormous negative impact on other women's lives. Oh, well, did, 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 did she just say that? Yeah. Yeah, she did. So it's not enough to feel personally empowered or be personally successful within the oppressive framework of the current system. You know, for as much as I hear about this whole women are oppressed by the patriarchy thing, you know, when I, you know, look into it and really listen to feminists, I notice something about a lot of these mainstream feminists, and that is they never actually say how women are oppressed. I mean, except for the wage gap, which doesn't actually exist, by the way. But I mean, Anita, like how? How are women oppressed? Didn't you say up until the time you were 20, you were able to make your own decisions? It wasn't until feminism was introduced to you did you start thinking that something was going on. <sighs> Bloody hell. Even if an individual woman can make patriarchy work for her, it's still a losing game for the rest of the women on the planet. Well, fuck that shit. Why doesn't that one woman just then teach all the women how she defeated the patriarchy. I mean, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that actually be a solution to the problem? No, of course not. The fact of the matter is that some choices have ramifications beyond ourselves and reinforce harmful patriarchal ideas about women as a group and about women's bodies and our wider shared culture. I know, right? Just take a look at Instagram, all of those thirsty, thirsty women on there. Can use one of these, man. They could certainly use one of these. And because of how systems of oppression intersect and compound one another, it's women of color, indigenous women, women living in the global south, women with disabilities, queer women, and trans women who bear the brunt of these ramifications. How so, Anita? How so? Oh, you're not going to explain it? Yeah, I didn't think you were. Choice feminism also obscures the fact that women don't have a real choice. We have very narrow set of predetermined choices within patriarchy. Women can choose from a pre-approved palette, but we cannot meaningfully choose liberation. We cannot choose a way out from our constraints, at least not without ending these oppressive systems that limit our options. So when we talk about free choice in today's world, we're really talking about a very narrow spectrum of choices that are amenable to patriarchy. You know, Anita, I, I really fail to understand. How do you hope to defeat this so-called patriarchy or this patriarchal system if these people don't even, one, know that they're living in this so-called patriarchal system, or two, don't have the ability to choose to do anything for themselves? How can they do that? They can't choose from themselves, remember? That's what you just said. You know, it kind of sounds like to me that you don't really know what the fuck you're talking about right now. So, when we talk about how to be a feminist... Complain, complain, complain over the petty shit. Complain, complain, complain even when you benefit. Complain, complain, complain even when you win. Complain, complain, complain that's how you be a feminist. For me, that means being committed to something much larger than ourselves. It's understanding what role you play in our collective movements for liberation. It's re-examining our desires and interests and understanding how those are often shared by capital... Sorry, how they're often shaped, maybe shared, who knows, uh, by capitalism, patriarchy, and white supremacy. You no, know, there's something really odd that's going on here. You're talking about how you are fighting for the liberation of women, and yet you're sitting here on this platform with a bunch of people watching you on the internet. Do you really think that an oppressive government would ever let women, you know, women they're trying to subjugate, ever, ever, ever get so far as to organize themselves against that freaking government? Of course not. That's how I know there's no fucking patriarchy. No patriarchy would even let you get to this fucking point to where you can openly pronounce its existence. I mean, I, but I mean, you know, it's not like we have years of fucking history to back that up. Keep talking, Nita. 
It's understanding our own intersections of privilege and oppression and how that will fundamentally change our behaviors and attitudes and values. It's realizing that being a feminist is a lifelong learning endeavor and that we will make some mistakes on the way. And we should be compassionate to ourselves when that happens. It's crazy to me how these feminists are trying to make this shit become a goddamn lifestyle. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is getting to ridiculous proportions. I mean, listen, 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 listen. Let me literally here for a second. I know that you probably think that your life sucks. See, here's the funny thing about living life. The more you expect from it, the more disappointed you'll be. If you want to live a good life, the truth of the matter is, all you have to do is take these expectations and bring them all the way down to right here. The more expectations you have for shit, the more your life is going to appear that it sucks. Even when not only in comparison, but even when in all actuality, it's not necessarily a bad life to be living. I mean, Anita, you make so much more money than I make, and all you do is just about absolute fucking nonsense. You're over here talking about how fucking oppressed you are. I mean, what about all those different garbage collectors who collect your fucking trash and all those men who are going to war and coming back with fucking post-traumatic stress or all those fucking firefighters who have their lungs almost fucking destroyed from breathing in all the fucking toxic smoke saving people's lives. But of course, your life is so fucking terrible now, isn't it? It's realizing that others will make mistakes and we should extend that compassion to them as well. Feminism is not about striving for perfection. It's about striving for justice. Is this fucking Justice League now? <laughs> we are all connected. We are all bond together under the oppression of patriarchy. And as such, our personal actions or inactions do have a harmful effect on other women, especially those from the most marginalized communities. I realize this isn't a popular thing to say, but the irony of that fucking statement. Feel go feel. Ugh. I can't say it apparently. That's how bad it is. No, um, but feel good personal empowerment is not how to be a feminist. In order to be a feminist, we have a responsibility beyond ourselves. We have a responsibility to each other, and we have a responsibility to work for the collective liberation of all women. Actually, you mean you have a responsibility to collectively complain while a bunch of men who are subservient to you do a bunch of shit. That, that's what you mean. I mean, seriously, has anyone ever noticed that every single solution, solution, a feminist has ever, you know, put forth has always been some man doing something but never them actually participating in it? For example, teach men not to rape. No, 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 don't, don't teach women to defend themselves. No, teach men not to rape. I mean, for all this shit talking about empowering women and shit, you, you feminists just haven't been doing a fucking fantastic job of that at all. Like, at all. Like at all. But you know, I'm just some nabby head nigga on the internet, so wrap us up, Anita. Yeah, and that's pretty much where Anita's how to be a feminist bullshit ends. So, um, yeah, we got some good stuff coming in the future. Just gonna say that. Go subscribe to my extended channel for longer videos. And with that being said, I certainly hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, man, go ahead and click the like button. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Comment and comment box below. And as always, have a great day. I'll see you cool cats soon. Adios.